Mehmed II, or Feshi Sultan Mehmed, Ottoman Sultan from 1444 to 1446 and from 1451 to 1481. A great military leader, he captured Constantinople and conquered the territories in Anatolia and the Balkans that constituted the Ottoman Empire's heartland for the next four centuries. Mehmed was the fourth son of Murat II by Lady Homa, an enslaved girl in Murat's harem. At the age of 12 he was sent, as tradition required, to Maniza with his two tutors. The same year, his father set him on the throne at Edin and abdicated. During his first reign, Mehmed had to face grave external and internal crises. The King of Hungary, the Pope, the Byzantine Empire, and Venice all eager to take advantage of the accession of a child to the Ottoman throne succeeded in organizing a crusade. Edin was the scene of violent rivalry between the powerful Grand Vizier Shandali Khalil, on the one hand, and the Vizier Zaganos and Sahabeddin, on the other, who claimed that they were protecting the rights of the child sultan. In September 1444 the army of the Crusaders crossed the Danube. In Edin this news triggered a massacre of the Christian-influenced Harafaya sect and conjured up an atmosphere of panic and arson. When the Crusaders laid siege to Varna, the reigning Sultan's father was urged to come back from retirement in Bursa and lead the army. The Ottoman victory at Varna under Murad II put an end to the crisis. Mehmed II, who had stayed in Edin, maintained the throne, and after the battle his father retired to Maniza. Zaganos and Sarabedin then began to incite the child Sultan to undertake the capture of Constantinople, but Sandali engineered the revolt of the Janissaries and called Murad II back to Edin to resume the throne. Mehmed was sent once more to Maniza with Zaganos and Sarabedin, newly appointed as his tutors. On his father's death, Mehmed ascended the throne for the second time in Edin. His mind was filled with the idea of the capture of Constantinople. Europe and Byzantium, remembering his former reign, were then not concerned much about his plans. Neither was his authority firmly established within the empire. But he was not long in showing his stature by severely punishing the Janissaries who had dared to threaten him over the delay of the customary gift of accession. Yet he reinforced this military organization, which was destined to be the instrument of his future conquests. He devoted the utmost care to all the necessary diplomatic and military preparations for the capture of Constantinople. To keep Venice and Hungary neutral, he signed peace treaties favorable to them. He spent the year 1452 mainly in building the fortress of Bogusksen for the control of the Bosporus, in building a fleet of 31 galleys, and in casting new cannon of large caliber. He made the Hungarian master gunsmith, Erborn, cast guns of a size unknown as yet even in Europe. Meanwhile, the Grand Vizier Sandali argued against the enterprise and during the siege of Constantinople, the opposing views were voiced in two war councils convened at critical moments. Zaganos vehemently rejected the proposal to raise the siege. He was given the task of preparing the last great assault. The commander-in-chief, Mehmed to himself, on the day of the attack personally directed the operations against the breach opened in the city wall by his cannon. The day after the capture of the city, Sandali was arrested and soon afterward was executed in Edin. Mehmed had had to consent to a three-day sack of the city, but, before the evening of the first day after its capture, he countermanded his order. Entering the city at the head of a procession, he went straight to Hagia Sophia and converted it into a mosque. Afterward he established charitable foundations and provided 14,000 gold ducats per annum for the upkeep and service of the mosque. One of the tasks on which Mehmed II set his heart was the restoration of the city, now popularly called Istanbul, as a worthy capital of a worldwide empire. To encourage the return of the Greeks and the Genos of Galata, who had fled, he returned their houses and provided them with guarantees of safety. In order to repopulate the city, he deported Muslim and Christian groups in Anatolia and the Balkans and forced them to settle in Constantinople. 
he restored the Greek Orthodox Patriarchate and established a Jewish Grand Rabbi and an Armenian Apostolic Patriarch in the city. In addition, he founded and encouraged his viziers to found a number of Muslim institutions and commercial installations in the main districts of Constantinople. From these nuclei, the metropolis developed rapidly. According to a survey carried out in 1478, there were then in Constantinople and neighboring Galata 16,324 households and 3,927 shops. Fifty years later, Constantinople had become the largest city in Europe. The capture of Constantinople bestowed on Mehmed incomparable glory and prestige and immense authority in his own country, so that he began to look upon himself as the heir of the Roman Caesars and the champion of Islam in holy war. It is not true that he had preconceived plans for his conquest, but it is certain that he was intent upon resurrecting the Eastern Roman Empire and upon extending it to its widest historic limits. His victory over the Turkmen leader Yuzun Hasan at the Battle of Bashkent in Erzincan marked in Mehmed's life a turning point as important as the capture of Constantinople, and it sealed his domination over Anatolia and the Balkans. Mehmed had assumed the title of Khazar I Rome and, at the same time, described himself as the lord of the two lands and the two seas, a designation that reflected his idea of the empire. During the quarter century after the fall of Constantinople, he undertook a series of campaigns or expeditions in the Balkans, Hungary, Wallachia, Moldavia, Anatolia, the island of Rhodes, and even as far as the Crimean Peninsula and Otranto in southern Italy. This last enterprise indicated that he intended to invade Italy in a new attempt at founding a world empire. The following spring, having just begun a new campaign in Anatolia, he died 15.5 miles from Constantinople. Gout, from which he had suffered for some time, in his last days tortured him grievously, but there are indications that he was poisoned. During the autocrat's last years, his relations with his eldest son Bayezid became very strained, as Bayezid did not always obey his orders. Thus, at his death, the malcontents placed Bayezid on the throne, discarding the Sultan's favorite son, Jem, and initiated a reaction against Mehmed's policies. 